Okay, so uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be working on creating our own movie posters. And for this project, uh, we're going to get you all to just slap this one together, just following along with the tutorial, and then we'll do another one of our own after this using our own components. But just uh, to get you a look of to get you an idea of sort of what a movie poster can look like and also of course dive in a couple of different tools um, this is what we're going to do. So I've downloaded these two images from the assignment page mountain and person both very inspiringly named and uh, they look kind of nice so we're, we're going to use this as our starting point. So uh, number one is we are going to just take this image and stick it on top of the mountain. So I'm not even going to select anything out of this one I'm just going to grab it with my move tool and click and drag it up here and drop it in. And there it is. Now obviously that's not what we want it to look like in the end, but it's a good start. So the very first thing we're going to do is just really simply change our blending mode. And I'm going to go to uh, lighten. That gives me the look that I want. It gets rid of all the black and just leaves the brighter parts of the image out in front. So I like that kind of look. You know, typically this might be, you know, your actor or whoever it is that's going to be in the movie. Um, so I'm going to put that in there, and then uh, what I want to do actually is I'm going to grab my eraser over here, and I'm just going to make sure it's big enough. Um, let's see, that's actually not, a, not bad right there. I'm going to do that, and I, I just don't like all this extra piece. I just want his head. And, you know, as always, don't forget if you, if you make an oops like that, you can undo with Control-Z, or you can open up your history and just back up to your previous step. So I'll do that again, hopefully get it right this time. Okay, good. That looks pretty nice. Uh, I want to make it a little bigger though, so I'm going to transform it like we do with our leprechaun. So the way I'm going to do that is edit, transform, and scale. Uh, the keyboard shortcut to that is just, here I'll get out of this, if I go control T, it brings up the same thing. Um, and I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts because they are a lot faster than having to go through all the menus. But as you're comfortable, I'd encourage you just to try out some of those. So I'm going to make that a little bigger and then just put it somewhere where I like the look of it. Um, let's see. You know, I'm going to stick it right here. Even though it looks like he's looking the wrong way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my transform menu and I am going to flip it horizontally. There. Okay, cool. I like that. There. That just kind of fits in nicely with this, the texture, the contour of these mountains here. So that's good. So, um, I mean, I could add some more stuff in there as well, but I'm just trying to give you a basic idea for what this looks like. I'm going to maybe... I'm going to mess around with the size a little more. I'm not quite 100% happy. Make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so I used my keyboard short, shortcut there to transform it. Control T. And then when I was done, just hit enter, and that makes the transformation complete. Now, uh, we need a title. So, grab my text tool, and we're going to give it a title, and we'll just give it a really great title like uh, Scary Mountain. That sounds good. Um, and I'm going to actually, just for fun, I'm going to make it right justified. So I'm going to use this here. Oops. Uh, let's select all my text. And then it's like, ah, there you go. And it kind of jumps over, but that's okay. So I'm going to put it here. All right. That's not bad. But the color's wrong, right? I can't see it on this background. So I'm going to select all my text again and choose a new color that's going to show up a little better. Sometimes what I like to do is actually just try and draw a color out of the actual, um, out of the actual poster, but of course that's not doing me a whole lot of favors. But sometimes I like using that just as a starting point, and then I can just uh, adjust it as I want there. So just bring it. So it's kind of in the same color zone, but a little bit different. So I don't kind of like that. I'll go with that. And um, I'm going to do some more transforming. I'm going to make that a little bigger. So I can do that a couple of different ways. One is I can actually just grab this guy and I can, you know, adjust the size this way. Or I can actually literally just use my transform. I can go edit, transform, scale, and I can scale my text that way. And sometimes that's better. And the trick with a movie title is you want to make sure it's nice and big so it fits on your on your poster. It's nice and noticeable. It's the most important part of your movie, so we want to make sure that people know what your movie is called. So I'm going to go like that. Now the other thing, this is getting a little nitty-gritty, but what the heck, let's do it. Um, these words are, they're kind of far apart. You see there's this big gap in between them, and I don't like that. So if I go over here, and it says there's like an A on top of another A, and there's little arrows that show, that determines how far apart the two lines of text are. So if I just start clicking and dragging, you can see that the, the letters aren't changing the size, 
but the distance between them is. So that's pretty good. I'm going to hit this little check mark right up here. There, I like that a little better. Now, what else do I need to do? I'm going to put in a little sort of a, a tagline, something about uh, the movie that will maybe be like uh, a little, I don't know, a little, something that will catch someone's eye. So let's just make up a quick little phrase. Um, I'm going to do it in a different font. Um, do something, I don't know, I'll try that just for fun for now. Nope, don't like it. Um, <laughs> too many fonts, too many fonts. I want something that's not the same style as what I already have. I want to match up different kinds of fonts together. So I'm going to try that. Let's see. Okay, and of course it's got that nonsense in there. Um, and now I need like a little tagline. So it's going to be something like... It's so scary. Yep, it's so scary. There you go. Good enough. I'm making this after school. I'm tired. I don't need to be brilliant about it. I'm going to make a different color to make it stand out a little bit. Make a white. And again, I'm going to go with, make it small, make this smaller. I really want to contrast the two sizes, right? I don't want it to be, and I'm going to put it actually over here. Oops. Ah, okay, let me get back to my history. I did too much clicking. All right, try that again. I'm going to go like that. It's so scary. And I'm going to make this bold. The way I'm going to do that is okay, select it all. And let's see. Let's make it like that. There you go. Give a little bit of weight. Not a fan of that font, but um, you know what? For the sake of this, let's just keep it like that. Okay, so the next part that we want to get in here is the actual credits. So what you're going to have to do is download the basic credit block and the steel tongs font and install the font, which I can help you out with in class, and then um, uh, open up this. And this is what you're going to get. Studio Name Pictures presents title, a film by a director named Actor 1, Actor 2. So obviously all of these things you're going to replace with something else. And um, here's the thing, though, is that uh, this font is kind of weird. Like, I'm going to try and type in uh, scary, big scary pictures. And if I do that, I get a whole bunch of weird stuff like this because I'm typing in lowercase. So in order to get actual letters, I have to type in uppercase. So I just put on my caps lock. And now i got Big Scary Pictures Presents Scary Mountain, a film by... And that's going to be my name, et cetera, et cetera. And I can keep going on and filling this all out. So, um, Mr. Lawrence, et cetera. I'll just leave it there for now. That's good enough. You get the idea. So now what I'm going to do is take this thing, and I'm going to click and drag it over here. And a little bit small, so again, I can just scale it up, make it the right size. No, I really mean it. I really want to scale it up. There we go. And that's going to kind of sit down there in the bottom, as it does... <laughs> as it does in all movie posters, in that nice little super skinny, tiny writing that we can barely read, but that's how it works. So, um, I kind of got there. Ah, that's too big. I'm going to make it smaller. Good. All right. And I'm going to move that over to the center. I should see a little purple line kind of jump up there somewhere. Oh, there it is. Oop, good, good. That's centered. Awesome. Good. That's not too bad. Uh, there's one more thing that we need to do to make this thing look like really well. No, there's not one more thing. I keep saying one more thing. There's a lot of more, a lot more things. But nonetheless, we're going to do a couple things here. Um, the first is I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to get my history out of the way, and in my layers, I'm going to add a new layer. So that's under layer new layer. Say okay, and I'm going to add a vignette. A vignette is like that effect where the light of the poster seems to get darker and darker towards the edges. It just helps to focus the eye a little bit more on what's happening in the foreground. So the way that I'm going to do that, uh, there's many different ways to do it, but here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to choose this tool, the elliptical marquee tool. Again, if you don't see it there, it should be second from the top, but just press and hold and you'll find a few different things here. So elliptical marquee. Now what I'm going to do, this is going to make my life a little easier, is I'm actually going to zoom out just a touch, control minus, and I'm going to start drawing in the top left corner, I'm going to click and drag and create this circle like this. And then, like what we did last class, if, especially if you did like the, the women's makeup routine or uh, track, um, we're going to go select and we're actually going to modify our selection and feather it 
a little bit to make it soft. And uh, I'm just going to guess. I'm going to just try 80 pixels and see if that helps, if that does what I want it to do. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to fill it in, except, oh, I need to do one more thing. I need to do the inverse. Right now I've selected inside the circle. I want to select outside the circle. So I'm going to select inverse. There we go. And I'm going to use my paint bucket, which is right here. doesn't look like a paint bucket, but again, if I click and hold, there's my paint bucket tool. And I'm just going to fill it in with black. There we go. And we'll see how that goes. Nope, that looks like garbage. Okay, so I'm going to go select, modify, feather, and I'm going to bump that up to like, oh, let's try 200. I want to make it really soft. Let's try that again. Uh, I'll try again. Select, modify. And how much feathering is required depends on how big your image is. Um, but we'll just try, uh, let's, let's really go for the broke. Go for broke here. Try 300. There you go. Yeah, that's better. All right. I like that. Now, that's that's too much. That looks really weird. But what I can do now is I can use transform and I can actually scale this outwards. And if I want to actually have control of height and width, if I hold down shift, it allows me to adjust. So I can do stuff like that. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave a little more of that vignette on the bottom because I kind of like the way that looks but then a little less on the top. There. So that's not too bad. That definitely helps to draw the eye in. So we'll take it off versus putting it on. You almost don't notice it when it's there. Uh, and yet, when you take it off, it makes a big difference. So a vignette. And the other thing we're going to do, which honestly probably isn't going to be very effective in this video because the resolution is not high enough, but I'm going to just go into my background layer and I'm going to go to my filter and I'm going to add some noise. So in the filter menu, add noise. And noise is going to add just a little bit of grain to my image because digital images tend to be very, very clean. There's not a lot of these little specks on them and it makes them look uh, just too clean, honestly. They don't look quite right. So I mean, we can crank it up and put way too much in there. But if we just bring it down, just so that it adds a little bit of texture and meat to the image, it just helps it feel just a little bit nicer. Again, not a huge change on, on the video. You really can't see much but it's just a nice little change that just adds a little bit more of a polish to it. So that's our basic movie poster. Scary Mountain, it's so scary. It's got a little tagline here. We've combined a couple of images. We've done our credit block, put a little vignette, add a little bit of noise. Is this everything we can do? No, I'm probably going to show you more in class, but heck, this tutorial has gone on long enough. So let's call it there and say, let's give her.